Coming up to down the Wayne Trainer is the end of season turn. We've got a couple of new formations to try as well as we look to finish inside of the top half. They don't work. That could be a problem because then we won't really know who to buy in the transfer window. Everyone and welcome to episode number 20 of the Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM with Plymouth Argyle. I hope you're doing well in the coming day. We played two of our last three games on camera in our first season up in the Premier League. Both at home first up, we take on Manchester United, a team currently on the brink of securing a Europa League spot. And off the back of that and taking on Leeds United away from home, we then take on Everton to finish up the season. Should also get our transfer budget and get through the end of season review as well. So for them forward to that coming up. In today's episode, the end of season two, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but off the back of yesterday's episode where our poor form, it did continue as we took on Aston Villa and Newcastle. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner at the end of the episode. I did just fill a little bit with our Gagan press and move it to a 4 3 3 off the back of that, closing the game, doing some video stuff and reloading it back up. Thankfully, got some of the thumbs up suggestions from our assistant manager that you usually get when trying to select the new tactic, which wasn't working at the end of yesterday's episode. So, because of that, we have made some changes to our freeloaded tactics here at Plymouth Argyle, the first of which is still a gag impression. This is the one that we have tried in our one game we've played since yesterday's episode, albeit against already relegated Ipswich Town. As you can see, now playing a 4-2-4, so the change does mean that instead of having someone like Facundo Farias as the central attacking midfielder, instead we've got Good Johnson alongside Wayne up top, so two strikers, and thankfully that did actually help us out when we took on Ipswich Town. The Wayne train putting the ball in the back of the net twice in this game. Unfortunately, the first one did come from an offside bit here. Around the half hour, Mark Whitaker sets him up there inside the box. And he bangs that one past Hlugke and goal. And the Wayne train makes sure that we pick up our first win in a little while in the Premier League. As you can see, we weren't actually that dominant stats-wise, which I guess is a little bit concerning against the team who will be in the championship next season. But thankfully, we kept a clean sheet and picked up a win. So I think this might be what we go with. All the remainder of the season. Hopefully we can at least pick up some decent results with this 4-2-4 Gagan press. Otherwise, we do have a couple of other tactics that we can switch to to try and figure out what we're going to be doing here at Plymouth Fargo going in to next season, which is important, so we know who to buy in the upcoming transfer window. But as well as that, we've got a 4-3-3 control position. So again, not playing with a central attacking midfielder. That obviously means that someone like Bischoff would go forward and John Buckley would make his way back into the team. As you can see, Bischoff now has made his way into that deep line playmaker spot over John Buckley, having just finished second on the next gen list. And also another two striker up top formation, this time a vertical ticky ticker, but a narrow diamond. So this one does actually have a central attacking midfielder. Hopefully we'll be able to figure out which one of these tactics does work for us best going into next season. But we're going to start off with the Gagan press, which works so well back in December before the form just went to complete pieces off the back of those goalkeeping injuries, as I've mentioned quite a few times this week so far. We've only picked up three wins in the Premier League since the start of the new year. Hopefully that will change during the course of today's episode. We can pick up a couple more and get ourselves into the top half of the Premier League table. This is what it looks like going in to the final three matches. Unfortunately, Man United are in seventh, and because they won the Carabao Cup, that's not going to be a European qualifying spot for next season anyway, and the 14-point gap to Newcastle, too much to make up. We could potentially sneak above Tottenham Hotspur, but that's really as high as we can finish up in eighth. We could slip down quite a bit. Teams all the way down to Nottingham Forest, if they pick up good enough results, could jump above us. So we could slide down the table quite a bit during the course of today's episode, but to be fair, doesn't really matter if we're not going to get a European qualifying spot we get the same prize money no matter what in £25.1 million, but hopefully we can finish in the top half considering how we were sitting at the halfway point in the season. The second half of it hasn't been too good. Hopefully we can figure something out going into our second season 
in the Premier League, but first up, we take on that Manchester United team who we did lose narrowly to in the first half of the season, 1-0 at Old Trap, and that was only because Sebastian Hausner early in the second half did give away a penalty, and hopefully we can back up that win over Ipswich Town with a decent performance here against a much stronger team in Manchester United. Obviously, it does change our bench a bit as well, with only two first-team strikers here currently at Plymouth Argyle. That might be something we need to do heading into next season if these two striker formations do work, but thankfully, Nikola Ilyev actually a pretty good striker. He can do a decent job. One of our former central attacking midfielders, also Facundo Farias, can play there as well, but not quite as good as Nikola Ilyev as a striker. And also, if we really struggle, Facundo Farias can just go into a central attacking midfield role as well. So it does give us a bit of versatility on the bench. We're not too bad off in terms of our squad balance, but it might just mean that maybe someone like Facundo Farias might end up in an interesting situation going into next season if we do end up with this 4-2-4 being our formation going in to our third season of the Save Our Second One in the Premier League. Man United are mixing their form a little bit. You'd expect them to be the favourites in this one. 10 points clear of us and also with a game in hand as well, also being the Carabao Cup winners. They've tasted a bit of silverware this year. We haven't done that since picking up the championship last season, albeit we still have had a pretty good first season up in the Premier League, but unfortunately, the second half of it, not nearly as good as it was threatening to be. Off the back of that nice run of form, we did find with our attacking 4 2 3 1 Gagan press in the month of December. But so far, we've actually been on the front foot in this game, albeit now a free kick to United. They look there for Dallo at the far post. Now, good Johnson with a chance for us here to get on the counter attack, but unfortunately, run straight into Dallo. And it's a chance here for Mason Mount to get United on the counter attack. Now, Anthony. Stands up there, Jacob Graves. And that is really poor defensively from our left back. Maybe we need to convert him to a centre back for next season because he just does look like at times to be struggling out on that left hand side. I think he struggled with a goal in yesterday's episode as well. But unfortunately, off the back of a pretty good start in this game, Jacob Graves just gets left behind there from Anthony. And Mike Cooper can't keep that one out at the near post. And we go 1 0 down just shy of the 20 minute mark with their first shot of the game, oh how typical FM, before that though, it was certainly looking encouraging based on the stats, so hopefully we can bounce back from that, Randall is on a yellow card, he might be coming off at half time for someone like Rafael Mamas, another player actually, who might not be here next season, because I still don't think he's got enough minutes to get that ESC removed, so it does mean he would not get a work permit, so we can't play him, but so far that's just been the one highlight in the first half, that goal to Anthony, we encourage the guys, but unfortunately, just as we do that, there is a highlight here for United Hoyland, who's a little bit injured, floats that one into the mix, we head it clear, but now Casemiro puts that one into the mixer, Kessler Hayden tries to pass it out, potentially to the Wayne train, it's a shocking idea, he gifts it to Anthony, and he puts it away for a double, and that is an absolute gift to make it 2-0, just shy of half time, and that feels a little bit harsh, based on stats, but Casemiro, good ball into the mixer, he is looking for, there for the Wayne train, but unfortunately, it finds Anthony, and he makes it 2-0, and now Man United actually looking like they've had the better of things here in the first half, hopefully a chance for us here to potentially grab a goal back before halftime, otherwise, might be worth going attacking for the second half, being two goals down, might be worth a risk, see how that goes with our different formation, with this Gagan press now, good chance for Whitaker. Well and truly in behind here, big chance to make it 2-1, but unfortunately that comes off the base of the post and it is still 2-0 to Manchester United. Definitely need to be taking those chances, although he does win a corner shortly off the back of that, but that was a massive chance to try and get back into this game before halftime. Morgan Whitaker only on a 6.4 to be fair, being one of our better players so far this season. In the save, unfortunately, he hits the post. That will be that for the first half. We go into the sheds 2-0 down which is a bit disappointing, albeit they are a good team, uh, Manchester United, but did feel like that we started that first half off pretty well until Anthony got that first goal by skinning Graves, and then absolute giveaway there before half time. Now we're going to go attacking for the second half. Also, my mask can come on for Randall on that yellow card. Also led for a struggling Kesler Hayden, who did make that mistake, and also we might just chuck Reese Williams onto a central defender like we were doing with our old Gagan press, don't know if the ball playing defenders work too well for us here at Plymouth Argyle and also Ian Pervader. He can come on for a struggling Morgan Whitaker. 
who did miss that big chance late in the first half. We'll try and pump the guys up here and give them a bit of belief going into the second half. Hopefully, we can at least grab one goal back and make this a bit interesting. Otherwise, that will be concerning because we were scoring lots of goals with our old 4 2 3 1. If that's not going to be the case with the 4 2 4, that might be a little bit worrying. We are drifting down the table in terms of being one of the better goal scoring teams in the Premier League. Now, Bischoff with a free kick, looking to pull off there potentially a Macy Fraser, but unfortunately, that one saved by Onana. Maybe need to do a dummy on that one like the Sheenix are, but Cullum right now with the corner, and he does find good Johnson, the big tall Icelandic striker, gets his head on the end of that one, that might help us out actually, in terms of goal scoring, having him on the field, as well as the Wayne train, it will mean now, we're really threatening from these set pieces, with lots of tall options, with two centre backs, also Jacob Graves, quite tall at left back, as well as our big Icelandic striker, and thankfully we do make it 2-1, we'll encourage the guys off the back of that, and hopefully we can find a way to grab something from this game, encouraging signs early in the second half, albeit off the back of that, there is a highlight from the restart to Man United, and so far, they're keeping the ball well, good short passing here, with quite a high tempo, Luke Shaw plays that over the top for Marcus Rashford, they float that one far post for Bruno Fernandes, we did not get a single touch of the ball off the back of that goal to good Johnson, and all that good work has been undone, albeit wasn't too much good work, it's back to a two-goal buffer for the Red Devils. They make it 3-1 to be fair. It's a really well-built goal, but still, Bruno Fernandes left open at the far post. That's not ideal, and we're back to being two goals down, which is not ideal. I was hoping we'd be able to at least get that back to a one-goal deficit for a little while and see if we could draw level in this game. Now, Reese Williams down to a 6.4. Sebastian Hausner can come on for him, I think, for now. That's all we need to do with the stoppage. Just one more substitution left off the back of this one. But unfortunately, we grab a goal and Man United grab one back. And now it looks like we will be losing this game with the 4-2-4, which is not ideal. But still, Man United are quite a good team. If we can pick up decent results off the back of this one against both Leeds United and on that final day when we do take on Everton, that potentially is a bit more encouraging. Now, free kick here to Man United. They take it short, and Anthony is looking for a hat trick. Just jogs for our defense, but thankfully, that time his shot straight into the path of Mike Cooper, who does make the save. To be fair, only on a 6.5, Louis Jr. is back from injury. Maybe he could get a couple of games before he takes over that first team spot for next season. Also, we're going to bring on here Jake Buckley for a red hearted Tom Bischoff, and also we might just drop back our defensive line to stand that is something I usually like doing with my teams, but so far in this save, haven't really needed to. The high defensive line seems to have worked pretty well, and at the moment, we're keeping things pretty solid at the back, and actually, stats-wise, this game is pretty even, but unfortunately, a couple of poor goals that we do concede, especially that one just before halftime, Kesler Hayden gifting the ball to Anthony to make it 2-0. That was a big difference maker. We grabbed one back early in the second half. Through good Johnson also could have grabbed a goal back Late in the first half, through Morgan Whitaker, but unfortunately off the back of grabbing that goal back, Bruno Fernandes puts one away at the far post, and we suffer a 3-1 defeat to Manchester United at home park. We'll tell the guys, not really good enough, but to be fair, stats-wise, wasn't too bad. Hopefully, if we stick with this tactic, we can perform better against teams below us on the table, like Leeds United and Everton. We'll come back shortly, show you guys highlights from that Leeds United game before we play our final game of the season and hopefully pick up a win with the 4-2-4 against Everton. And we are back with the highlights from that game that we did play before our final day clash against Everton. It was away against Leeds United. We actually got off to a good start in this game. Tom Bischoff with a nice finish there into the top left corner, albeit did take a bit of a deflection. We held on to that 1-0 lead for most of the game with a standard defensive line from the get-go, but unfortunately there... Harrison somehow gets in behind our defence and pokes that one home past Louis Jr. in this game. Unfortunately, he won't be available for this next one that we are going to play because he's picked up yet another injury. And also Tom Bischoff picked one up off the back of scoring that first half goal. But a one-all draw, and to be fair, overall stats from this game weren't that good. But we were holding that lead for quite a while, so I wasn't too worried. But unfortunately, that late Harrison goal does mean that it's only a one-all draw. Also, Luther 
put one away late, but to be fair, was a mile offside. So we pick up points there away from home, which to be fair, we haven't been doing too much lately with that 4 2 3 1. So I suppose that's encouraging off the back of that 1 0 win prior to today's episode against Ipswich Town as well. But hopefully, on this last day of the season, we can beat Everton, and that might just be enough for us to stick with the 4 2 4 going into our third season of the save. But here's what the Premier League table does look like going in to the final day of the season at the moment. We are just inside of the bottom half, albeit West Ham. They take on Leeds United, so we could potentially be a jump above West Ham if Leeds United can pick up a decent result. And also Brentford, they are taking on, if we go back up a little bit further, Arsenal at the Emirates. There is a chance here that we could make our way up to ninth on the Premier League table. We can't catch up to Tottenham Hotspur, but have with an eight-point gap and only one game left this season. Also, the team's being relegated. They're already confirmed in Bournemouth, Ipswich Town, and Sheffield United, despite the fact that Bournemouth, when we played them with a form team in the league on that form table, they are going down with Lionel Scaloni to be fair. All three of those relegated teams going down by a big margin. Also, Man City, they are the champions, or the Champions League spots are already filled as well with Liverpool, Chelsea, and Aston Villa, albeit I think the fifth place team will also get a Champions League spot with the coefficient, so it does mean that that sixth spot is going to be Europa League. So really the battle on this final day of the season is for overall finishing position as well as to see who gets Europa League and that final Champions League qualifying spot with Manchester United already guaranteed at the very least to be in the Conference League. But hopefully we can pick up a win here over Everton considering they actually beat us quite comprehensively in the first half of the season. That was back in September. It was a 2-1 defeat. They picked up goals there just before halftime through Talis Magno and then through Beto. Just past the hour mark, we did grab one back late through Tony Springer, but unfortunately, we did suffer a defeat there, which at the time was pretty surprising as those guys were quite close to the relegation zone on either side of that. Some really good wins over Ipswich Town and Leeds United, you know, but hopefully we can get some payback here against another Sean and Sean Dyche. Also, as I mentioned, a couple of injuries going in to this one. Louis Jr. fractured finger. Our goalkeeping injury curse continues despite the fact that the game's now been updated again. And apparently goalkeeping injuries aren't quite as frequent. I think they're lying. And also Tom Bischoff, some pulled ankle ligaments. He'll be missing for this final game of the season. So it does mean John Buckley and Mike Cooper make their way back in to our starting 11. So it's pretty much the team we've been using for most of the season up in the Premier League, with Daniel Phillips making his way onto the bench in place of the injured Tom Bischoff. So a couple of changes from that previous game where we did pick up that draw against Leeds United, you know, but hopefully with this one being at home on the final day of the season, we can pick up three points. It's been a little while now since we actually picked up a win in the Premier League at home. There's a home win there in our last five fixtures. That was a friendly off the back of that Ipswich Town one. was hoping that might give some of our rotation players a bit more time with this new formation and some slightly different roles. But as you can see, our form late this season and pretty much ever since January has been pretty abysmal. But to be fair, Everton not doing too well either. They are going with the 4 2 3 1. Hopefully, we can prove that the 4 2 4 might just be a little bit better and hopefully finish the season off strong and make our way potentially into that top half of the Premier League table. Hopefully, can jump above Brentford at the very least, considering that they're taking on Arsenal, and we'll see how we get on yet again with that standard defensive line instead of that higher one. Might just mean we're a little bit more solid defensively. And the early highlight here is we've thrown inside of the final third. Kesler Hayden plays that to Randall. Now Buckley just outside the box plays that one forward. Too good, Johnson. He has a crack, but unfortunately, yet again, the woodwork gets in our way, and it's still nil all, but yet again, an encouraging start here at home park as West Ham, they take an early 1-0 lead over Leeds United. That might not be good news for us, but Arsenal, thankfully, they are beating Brentford. Now a free kick is a really well-worked one. Gibson finds himself in a ton of space, the centre-back, and puts that one away with his right foot. Nice routine there with Buckley picking him out and Everton doing a poor job, kind of similar to what happened with us in that Arsenal game in the first half of the season with Kai Havertz, but thankfully this time, we are on the positive end of it, and we pick up a goal to take an early 1-0 lead off the back of that, though Randall picks up yet again a yellow card. It does mean Mama should get some game time off the bench, which to be fair, he might need. But now it's a corner here for Everton. They put that one far post. They scramble that one too into the mixer. It makes its way out to Ghana 
on the edge of the box, but thankfully that one does come off the crossbar, definitely a Cooper Beaton, but thankfully it stays 1-0 in our favour early, and thankfully so far Everton, same amount of shots as us, but none on target compared to our force so far, that's the big difference maker, and we put that one away through Lewis Gibson, also that one shot at the time I was talking about it, because now we've got a few more that are not on target, but the one shot that wasn't on target at that stage did come off the woodwork, but good work from us there to keep the ball, despite looking a little bit iffy for a moment. Now the Wayne train plays that out to Kesler Hayden these days on support instead of attacks. Hopefully that does mean we're just a little bit more solid defensively. Good Johnson does beat the little midget Jordan Pickford to that ball, but unfortunately he makes enough of a pest of himself to make Good Johnson miss the target off the back of that. Another free kick we take, short looking to do the same thing again, but unfortunately Gibson, he was offside and also puts it wide. Now Kesler Hayden playing well, but he picks up a yellow card. But to be fair, that was a pretty good first half Everton with that chance that they did hit the crossbar with. But apart from that, we have been the team who have well and truly been on the front foot. Doesn't look like that standard defensive line is impacting our attack too much. We go into the sheds with a 1-0 lead. We will take off those players who are on yellow cards. So Ethan Laird, he can come on for Kane Kesler Hayden, who unfortunately was actually playing quite well. And also Adam Randall, he will come off for Rafa Mamas. Hopefully we'll just get enough minutes here late in the season to maybe get an extension to his work permit. Otherwise, that's definitely someone we do need to get rid of going into the third season of the save, albeit he might not have been good enough based on his attribute rating and his star rating anyway, but an early free kick for us here in the second half. John Buckley looks to put that one top right corner, misses the target. To be fair, our free kicks this season have been pretty rubbish since Morgan Whitaker has not been taking them. Maybe that's something we need to change going into the third season of the save, but set-piece coach doesn't think so, so I think we'll trust him. Now the Wayne train picks that ball back up for us off the back of that corner and Buckley makes his way inside the box. It takes a shot, a wicked deflection, and Good Johnson will put that one home. I think we deserve a bit of luck off the back of the poor form of had in the second part of the season with conceded some goals like that in our first season in the Premier League, and that is a goal completely built from the Wayne train, tracking back nicely and getting that ball for us. He might not score a goal in today's episode, but that's good enough for me. He kind of helps set one up there. And Gibson, he plays a nice ball out there too. To Buckley won't get the assist, but he found him in a ton of space. And we take a 2-0 lead here nice and early in the second half. So thankfully, our first cushion goal in a Premier League game for a little while, albeit off the back of that Everton. They do have a throw in, albeit just inside of our half. But McNeil now finds himself on the ball on the edge of the box. But good work there that time from Jacob Graves to get it back for us. Now Cooper plays that across to Gibson, having a very good game. Interesting pass, but thankfully Graves wins that one back for us. And now we start to charge forward here on this 4-2-4. Now Wayne, he picks out Laird off of the bench. What can he do? Squares that one for Morgan Whitaker this time. He does hit the target, unlike in that Manchester United game. He picks up a goal and hopefully that will seal three points for I believe only the fourth time this year in the Premier League to finish our season as we make it 3-0 just shy of the hour mark. Ethan Laird off the bench. He picks up an assist and Morgan Whitaker strokes that one nicely into the top left corner. Nothing that Tiny Arms Jordan Pickford can do about that. 3-0 and so far still Everton yet to have a single shot on target. Rafa Mamas does pick up a yellow card. I think we might risk it with him for the remainder of this game. But Tom Springett can come on for Cullen Wright who is down to a red heart. He'll get some game time late in this one, and we'll see if we can add to the misery here of Everton in these last 20 minutes so far. Does look like I'll be the superior Sean on this match day, but now John Buckley down to a red heart. Daniel Phillips can come on for him. Still think we can save up that last sub for when someone else does go down to a red heart. Rafa Mamas will keep as the ball wing midfielder seeing as he doesn't look any better in that deep line playmaker role. And now Jacob Graves goes down to a red heart. Our last sub, Sebastian Hausner, he can come on it right back. Ethan Laird can make the switch out left. But so far, very good performance. Eventually, Everton, they do get a shot on target, but not much XG from it. So it looks like a very comfortable win on the final day of the season. It looks like it's going to be enough for us to, to jump up to ninth. As we were hoping, of course, our goal differential still quite strong here at Plymouth Argo. But thankfully, we do pick up a win to end our first season in the Premier League with the 4-2-4. Some encouraging results. Only lost that one game since we did switch to it to Manchester United first up in today's episode. And even then, 
We kind of gifted them a goal in that game at least, but it's a good result to end our season here at Plymouth Argyle. I think that does mean we are going to secure a top half finish in our first season up in the Premier League. We'll just guarantee that and get through this post-match interview, but it does look like the 4-2-4 could be the way to go going in to our second season in the top flight. We finished ninth off the back of a 3-0 win over Everton. We'll come back shortly once we get our transfer budget for next season. So thankfully a win on camera for the first time in a little while to end the season here at Plymouth Argyle, the second one of the save and our first one up in the Premier League off the back of that couple of awards hurling Haaland considering he came from the winning team in Man City. He picks up a lot of awards in the Premier League and also Edison, he picked up the Golden Glove. But we do have our budget here at Plymouth Argyle. It was guaranteed to at least be 16 million. Also, we do have some loans. One of them's a optional future fee of around 7 million pounds for Ryan Hardy, and the other one was mandatory, just under 5 million for Bali members. So there will be some extra funds added to this transfer budget potentially once we do take over into the start of the actual transfer window. But the budgets that we have for our second season in the Premier League, to be fair, quite similar to what we had here last season 42 million pounds give or take, and a wage budget that gets bumped up to 750,000 pounds a week. What that looks like if we go over to the scouting page, it does mean that our wage budget hasn't actually been bumped up by a heap, but it's still enough for us to do some decent business with going into our second season up in the Premier League. I think we're just going to try and improve wherever we can, especially with that change of formation. Could just mean we do need to look at improving some squad depth in a couple of areas that we didn't think we needed for this season, but that's a decent transfer budget to work with at the start of next week, £42 million to spend in the summer transfer window. And just one click off the back of getting our transfer budgets for next season, we have the end of season review here at Plymouth Argyle for 2024-25. Unfortunately, this season, no silverware, but to be fair, keeping our spot in the Premier League, it was the main objective. Thankfully, we did tick that off. We're actually quite close to European qualification at one point, but that second half of the season, as you'll see soon, really put pay to that, those goalkeeping injuries, absolutely mudding things, but here's all the transfers that we did do here at Plymouth Argyle this season. As you can see, actually Nestory with the highest average rating of those players through to feature in the first team. Also Nikola Ilyev, also a green rating, but those guys didn't feature as much as some other players, which is why they have not picked up the signing of the season. Just going down a bit further, we did spend a lot of money, but the signing of the season actually was a cheap one, and Reese Williams for £250,000 to be fair, she got this one done back in January of last year, so it was quite a while ago, but he did join us prior to the start of the season and did a decent job as a centre-back partner alongside Lewis Gibson for us, starting 39 games, picking up one goal and one assist, but for £250,000, the board, quite happy with that one, but to be fair, most transfers that we did make were pretty good, just improving the overall squad quality here at Plymouth Argo and also in January, we do have to make a couple of interesting transfers. Libby Kakache coming in for an upset Bali member. Also, Ethan Led for an upset Almami Toure. And also, we brought in Hubert Klastik as well as Louise Jr. Because of the goalkeeping injury situations, we'd kind of had to change our plans a little bit with that in mind. But in the end, we did some pretty good transfer business. And it should mean we've got a nice strong squad here for next season, albeit a couple of changes might be needed to adapt to that 4 2 4 Almami Toure got the highest average rating of the players that we did sell when he went to Saudi Arabia back in January. But to be fair, most players that we did sell didn't perform overly well. A couple that we did sell on the cheap, which the board aren't too happy with. But to be fair, getting rid of their wages, I think, was the main thing. And freeing up some squad space and also the likes of Mikel Miller, Matt Butcher, Brendan Galloway and Callum Burton. They left on a free come the end of last season. A couple of decent players that we did loan out, as I said, Ryan Hardy and Bali Mumba. They have optional and mandatory future fees in those loan deals, so hopefully that might top out our transfer budget just a little bit as well. Going forward to the season results, we finished ninth in the Premier League, which to be fair, for a first season in top flight, isn't too bad at all. We finished a couple points clear of Leeds United and Ipswich Town, the other team that came up alongside us. Unfortunately, they got relegated pretty comfortably, but in terms of our form, it was pretty mixed for the first couple of months of the season, but still, we were doing a decent enough job to be around about mid-table, and then in December, we went attacking late in that Tottenham game at the end of November, and because we did that, 
and adapted that for the month of December. It did mean we had a really strong patch of form including that big 6-1 win over Liverpool and we backed it up with four more wins but unfortunately that Fulham game as I've mentioned quite a few times we Mike Cooper got injured celebrating a Ben Wayne goal. Of course we also got a goalkeeper injury the other time we took on Fulham when they hadn't had a shot in the game so not really too sure what they were doing to injure our goalkeepers there Fulham without hitting the ball but off back of that our form it did deteriorate and apparently according to the game that was because we were still using a 4-2-3 one. We got that off the back of yesterday's episode as well those losses to Aston Villa and Newcastle United so we did switch to the 4-2-4 and thankfully that just improved things enough late to make sure that we did pick up a top half finish. We probably could have switched a little bit sooner. But unfortunately I was a little bit too dumb to do that. And because of that we have just missed out on European football for next season. Albeit when you look at the points table it was a pretty sizable gap up to 7th spot. So maybe it wouldn't have made that much difference. But still that four months we did hit 2025 was pretty poor. Just checking here we picked up 5, 6 draws and 4 wins which is not a lot of points at all. Definitely need to improve that form going to next season. Otherwise, we might be down near the relegation zone, the FA Cup. We got past Blackburn Rovers, then got a really tough draw as we took on Man City and got knocked out by those guys at the Emirates. Albeit, to be fair, that probably wouldn't have been too bad a payday for us at Plymouth Argyle, despite the fact we are now a Premier League team. And in the Carabao Cup, another tough draw as we took on Brighton Hope Albion early in the season. And they thumped us 5-2, so didn't do too much in the Cups, but thankfully that did mean we could focus on the Premier League and keep ourselves nice and safe for our first season there, the biggest win, and surprisingly, not the match to remember, was that 6-1 win in early December over Liverpool, I think that's the best win that we've picked up so far in this save, you could arguably say that one over Chelsea last year in the Carabao Cup when we were down in the Championship, but apparently a 5-0 win over Leeds back in September, that was the match to remember to be fair, quite a comprehensive scoreline against the team who did finish just behind us in the championship last season and the goal of the season came back in November in a one all draw with Newcastle scored in first half injury time by Callum Wright. Just seen the stats from this game and really not too sure how we didn't win it but just coming into half time for some reason we we're in the white in this game but Callum Wright jinxes his way inside and beeps Pope there from a tight angle to be fair. I think we've scored a couple of better goals than that this season. But yeah, maybe not. So that was the goal of the season. Wasn't too special, I don't think. But as you can see, definitely a game that we should have been winning. Unfortunately, we dropped points. That was something we did quite regular this season, just at times where I think last season we would have come back and picked up wins in those games when we were down in the championship. Somehow our reputation does still stay at three stars. Hopefully that gets bumped up in our second season up in the Premier League. Obviously now being a Premier League club, most things in terms of prize money have gone up except for some reason corporate and hospitality and our top shirt sellers Morgan Whitaker, the Wayne Train, Bischoff, Elev and Good Johnson so a couple of new signings there and behind two of our main men who have been starting for us most of this save so far going forward to the best 11 for the year no Ben Wayne which is just blasphemous they've got Good Johnson in there to be fair he did score the same amount of goals and in less games so I guess that makes sense but still Got to have the Wayne train up front, but apart from that, it does look pretty much what we played with our 4 2 3 1 before we changed things very late to that 4 2 4 and going forward to the accolades. Now, some of these are from the championship last season, like me picking up the manager of the season down there, but we did pick up the manager of the month back in December with that great run of form that we did have before that Chelsea game, and also still some championship awards here in the overall competition awards for our players, Ben Wayne, the top goal scorer in the championship and also Morgan Whitaker and Kane Kiesler Hayden. They picked up awards, but the one that got picked up this year was from the Wayne train. He was the Oceania Footballer of the Year, so that's quite good, despite the fact he was nowhere near prolific as he was last season, but no doubt that would have taken into account somewhat his goals from the second half of the championship season, but the club awards, player of the season, young player of the season, they both go to Morgan Whitaker with a 7.1 average rating you saw before signing of the season, and the goal of the season, the top of goal scorer, it was shared, but thankfully it does go to Ben Wayne on this, so he does pick up one club award this season, most assists Morgan Whitaker, he picked up 10 to go alongside his 11 goals, and he also picked up six player of the match awards, and some record breakers on the right hand side, Mike Cooper with most clean sheets in this season, that won't be the case next season I think, because Louis Jr will be starting over him, also Morgan Whitaker, most player of the matches in the season, worst discipline Adam Randall, 
that's just the ball wing and fielder thing, and the highest transfer fee paid and received. Kane Kessler Hayden paid with £20 million to be fair. That might have been a touch overs on him, and also Almami Toure, £4 million coming in. Hopefully, we might break that one in our upcoming transfer window going forward to history in the making. The middle of the season, definitely the key point. That meant that we were pretty much safe from there, and thankfully we were, because the second half of the season was absolute dog poo, and going forward to the manager timeline, to be fair, not much has happened here. This year in game, as you can see, it goes back to July, when we were spending quite a bit of money, and then going forward, we picked up a win over West Ham late back in December, but apart from that, it's mostly about lots of money that did come into the club through transfers, and it does kind of make sense considering we had a mid-table finish without winning anything, and that is it. For the end of season review and going down a bit further, our overall best 11 so far here at Plymouth Argon. Thankfully, the Wayne trains in this up front. We've still got Mike Cooper in goal, Bully Mumba at left back. That's a bit awkward. He won't be here next season. Gibson and Plegazello at centre back. Another player there in Plegazello who won't be here next season. Kessler Hayden at right back. Randall in defensive midfield alongside Jordan Helton. Also not here. Mustafa Bundu at left wing. He's not here. Finn is us in the central attacking midfield role. He's not here, but is a free agent, I believe. And Morgan Whitaker, rightfully so, out on the right wing of the bench. Actually, some quite good players on there, still at the club. And Connor Hazard, Reese Williams, Jacob Graves, Luke Kundal off the back of his loan spell last season, Facundo Farias, Callum Wright, and Ryan Hardy, who will probably be gone for next season, albeit if Livingston don't take up that option to buy him, he could be a handy extra striker if we are going to play two up front. But I think that will do it. For the second season of the Save the Wayne train, and our first one up in the Premier League, we did a decent job to finish in ninth, albeit that second half of the season to kind of put a dampener on things, but hopefully we can have a formation that we can do some damage with here next season, especially off the back of a transfer window that we should have around about £50 million to spend. If you enjoyed today's episode and the season of the Wayne train, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up, on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well we'll come back at the start of next week with a transfer recap and probably our first game of the premier league season not too sure who that's against you have to wait a little while till we do get the fixtures but until the start of next week for the third season of the save our second one in the premier league hopefully this time we can maybe get some european football come the end of it thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and i'll see you then cheers <laughs>